Hey YouTube. So, I've been meaning to make this video for a while about Bullseye. Um, I, I've started it about ten times and never was able to really say what I wanted to say in it because um, somebody either interrupted me or something. But anyway, um, I'm going to do a little video about the dog and I think that this may help some people. If it doesn't, it doesn't, but it's a rainy day today, and I decided that I was going to take a break. And not only that, it's um, actually late, it's dark outside already, and if you look really close at Bullseye, you can see he's kind of wet, that's because it's raining, and him and I just went for a walk, so I'm wet as well. Yes, I said walk, but I don't mean now. You just went, so lay back down. Put your head down. Um, when I was a kid, we had a couple of dogs throughout the years, but they were pretty much what you'd call a Heinz or a Mutt. And uh, <clears throat> to me and to the people that I know, that means that there's way too many varieties in their blood, and they're not good for much more than eating, and, well, you get the picture. Anyway, so like the rest of us, my age group, we watched Lassie, Rin Tin Tin, and other TV shows that depicted dogs um, that were almost human in understanding and abilities. But having had a couple dogs as a kid, I knew they were not related to any of the TV show dogs. Because those dogs were as dumb as could be. Anyway, uh, during my working years and raising kids, I did not have time for any animals. So for a stretch of about 35 years, I had no dogs and um, I did go to a couple dog shows and thought about getting a dog but I never did. This guy's something else. If you, He's playing with a pipe fitting, it's a plastic pipe fitting because I was had one of my drawers open today and anything you see on the floor by the way is from Bullseye. He manages to grab stuff. He, this garage is his as far as he's concerned. Everything in here is his. And if you come in here, you're in his domain. So, I don't have a lot of chew toys for him because he'll chew them into the smithereens. But he does like chewing on plastic pipe fittings. So, they're not much more than the price of a dog bone. So, I let him go. He doesn't swallow anything. So don't be crying to me about that. He just chews it and spits the stuff out. That's why you see wood chips laying all over. Because that's what he does. Uh, so anyway, um, I didn't want uh, to have a dog and to see my dog rot his life away uh, in a kennel or on a chain day in and day out while I worked 16 hour days. Sometime in the mid 90's as uh, life slowed down and um, it became more predictable, I guess I should say. Most of the kids were grown and gone, so I decided that the time was right to get a dog. Come here. Bullseye. Come here. Come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. You want me to throw that? All right. Ready? Fetch. Come on. Here. Give. Come on. Give. Give. Good boy. Ready? Yeah, he's a character. So anyway, um, uh, the kids. Yeah, I was saying about the kids. So the. Kids were out of the house and stuff, so I decided it was time to get a dog. So it took me about six months and a lot of research to figure out what kind of a dog I actually wanted. Because um, even though I have a pretty outgoing personality, I'm pretty reserved. And I wanted a dog that was not one that was going to be uh, dragging me down the street or my wife on the end of a leash. And I wanted one that, you know, was pleasing to my personality. So I read all about these dogs and came up to a couple of hunting dogs. Uh, I had looked at uh, different ones and I, I love all of them, but 
I had uh, been to a dog show and a little Brittany like this jumped up and put his two paws on me and looked me in the eyes and I knew that from that day on that it was going to be a Brittany. So anyway, um, uh, I'll just tell you about him a little bit. Uh, first of all, I did want a hunting dog. That's why I built the house up here in the mountains. I never planned on moving here. I just planned on me and Bullseye coming here. But it ended up where we moved here. But the thing is, is uh, Bullseye is a Brittany, and sometimes people call him a Brittany Spaniel. And some people are offended by that. Uh, if you read all about Brittany's, it's like there's some, some kind of real different group that has Brittany dogs. But anyway, a Brittany is mainly a pointer. Uh, so what that means is they point birds by picking their one leg up and they're, they're, they're locked up like a rock. They look like a statue. He can stand pointing at a bird till I walk 150 yards to get to him. He's unbelievable how, what he, how the patience he has. So, um, and some dogs are called versatile dogs, which is what Bullseye is. Bullseye, not only does he point birds, but you can also take him hunting for waterfowl and he'll jump in any water. He hates being wet if it's to get a bath, but he'll jump in any puddle, any pond, any lake, any creek. He don't care when it comes to if there's a bird in there, he'll go get it. Um, so anyway, that means that he can point and retrieve. So uh, this is the second bullseye I had. The first Brittany I had, I named Bullseye also. And I loved that dog so much, and he was so smart that when he died, I couldn't stand not having him with me. So it took me about a month, and then I bought this guy. And I named him Bullseye, but my wife named him Bullseye Mickey because he was born on her dad's birthday. When I bought my first Brittany, I had read a book. There's a guy, he died this year, I'm sorry to hear it. Um, I doubt if the family watches my channel, but if they do, you have my condolences because you had a great dad there and a great husband. But anyway, um, the book I read was written by a guy called Larry Muller, and he wrote hunting dog articles for one of the outdoor magazines. But the book was called Speed Train Your Bird Dog. When I trained my first bullseye, I had the, bird, uh, the book dog-eared, pun intended, by the time I was done. But Muller knew his stuff, and that dog, I swear, read the book when I went to bed at night. Either way, he was a great bird dog and knew 30 different commands. This bullseye came from a good breeder and a trainer, uh, and the name of the place is Winnens, like W-I-N-N-E-N-S, bird dogs, and they're near Erie, Pennsylvania. I paid a good buck for the dog. Um, about the right price for Britney's, maybe a little higher, but nonetheless, these the, when the, when Bullseye came home, when I brought him home, uh, he was a little bit older than I would have liked. I wanted an eight-week-old, but they only had him. He was 16 weeks old. So 16 weeks is a little late to start training. However, from the day I brought him home, he was pointing. He knew how to woe, and woe means to a dog to stop or stand still, and he knew how to fetch, which you just saw an example of when he ran after that pipe fitting and brought it back to me. Now, I really don't care whether someone likes Bullseye or not, or is distracted by his bell or not, but for the sake of, of uh, education, I'll explain this to you. A pointing dog does this, plain and simple. He searches for birds, and in Bullseye's case, we're talking about grouse. When he smells the bird, he stops, locks up like a statue, and waits for the hunter to flush the bird, and that's me. So in other words, he'll point the bird out. He'll show me where it is, basically, and i got to go get the bird to fly. So, um, and I flush the bird. So the dog is what's known as steady to wing and shot. And then, uh, on command, the dog, after I shoot, brings the bird to me. What do you want me to do? You want me to throw that? Come here. Come here. Give. Give. Thank you. No, give. Want me to throw it? Bullseye is a Brittany, and some people call them Brittany Spaniels. Yes, he goes to the bathroom regularly. He's going to do it. You can see there he's going in the woods. He's only in there about 10, 15 feet, and that's open woods. 
you can see how hard it is to see him. So, I mean, that's open there. That's not normally where he would be hunting. He hunts in thickets, thick stuff where the, where birds hide. But you can see just, you know, and, and if I'm not zoomed in, it's very hard to pick him up. And that's why he wears a belt. Another battery bit the dust. So anyway, what I was saying about a pointing dog, he smells the bird, he locks, he stops, he locks up like a statue, he points, and he waits for me to flush the bird. The dog is steady to wing and shot, and then on command, the dog gets the bird and brings him to me, and he either drops the bird at my feet, or he'll put the bird in my hand. It all depends on sometimes how he's feeling and how excited he is. A uh, bullseye does all of that, and he does it very well. There's only one catch. I must have a shotgun in my hands, or he knows we're really not hunting. So when I take him out for a walk and all, he'll smell uh, grouse, he'll lock up at times, but I have to uh, heal him away from that. When I say heal him away, I tell him heal, and then he comes by my left side and stays by me. So that's what Bullseye does. Um, the bell then, and this is the part that seems to bother people, a bell on a bird dog is for two reasons. One, so the dog doesn't get shot, and two, so that I know where he is. So both of those things go hand in hand. If you also, I, I might have a couple video clips of Bullseye, because it's like I said dark now, but when he goes in the woods 10 feet, I cannot see him. And when we hunt, bullseye goes in very thick stuff. It's like a thicket. You can't walk through it barely. Only a dog can. That's why people use dogs to hunt with. So bullseye can go in there, but I can't see him. And I've got to be able to know where he is. And the bell tells me that. Now, they make a geo collar that you can put on them that actually points to where the dog is. But none of that stuff is refined enough to really know where the dog is. They're not bad. They can give you an idea, but the dog is moving so fast and so constantly that the thing can't update fast enough to tell you where this Brittany's at. And besides, when he's only 20 yards away, it's pretty rough to... By the time you calculate in your brain what the geo thing's trying to tell you, he's already moved, so that really doesn't count. But anyway, those who made stupid remarks about, like, who ever heard of a bell on a bird or on a dog, are obviously ignorant of what a bird dog is and does. A dog like a Brittany does not do well if they're not exercised daily, several times the day in fact. They love to be moving and seeking out that bird scent. Now the thing is, is I don't keep Bullseye locked up. I mean, Bullseye is in this garage. This garage is 24 by 52, and this dog has complete run. If I come in here in the morning and he's eaten something or done something he shouldn't have done, now there's nothing that can harm him, you know, but he, he d just does, and I clean up after him. That's the way it is. He doesn't potty in here. He's housebroken, and not only is he housebroken, he only potties in the woods or right next to the woods. I'm sure in my videos you may have seen him go and potty, and he'll pick his leg up right next to the woods, and that's how he is. But he's in the woods when he goes potty. So anyway, um, Bullseye runs at least two miles a day every day, seven days a week. There is nothing more important to me than this dog because he's, he needs to have a human intervention to take him to do things. So number two comes my wife and then whatever else comes down the pike during the day. But the dog, and my wife is the same way. She takes better care of Bullseye than me because I can go in the house and show you our treat cabinet and it's filled with dog stuff, not my stuff. Okay? So anyway, he loves the snow. Um, he loves to run around. And that seven-day-a-week thing is rain or shine. That's why he was just wet when he came back here. Um, he'll hunt until I drop every time I take him out. But the greatest pleasure of having Bullseye is to watch him work and witness what he does best, which is to find grouse. I've seen him find as many as 13 grouse in a mile stretch on a rainy day. It's unbelievable what he can do and what he smells. I don't know 
I have no idea how what a dog's thinking naturally, except for sometimes I can tell you what he's going to do before he does it, just by the way he acts. But I don't know how he can smell or what he's smelling, but he can smell it. And Bullseye is also the kind of dog, one time he jumped on a porcupine and one time was enough. Because I was pulling uh, uh, needles out of his private parts and he didn't really like that. So now, not only does he point grouse, but he will point a porcupine, a porcupine, <laughs> 50 yards away. And you ain't getting him any closer to that porcupine. Because he learned his lesson the first time. It's funny, but it was painful for him. And the worst part of it is I was uh, in Maryland looking at a, a, a thing, uh, something I was going to buy, and which was like 300 miles away from home. And my wife called me crying. The dog is, you know, we jumped on a porcupine. Help, help. And it was late at night, so we weren't going to be taking them to no vet. And around here, there's no place to really take them. So I come home and... I had to muzzle him because I didn't know what he would do because it was pretty painful. But he lived through it, moaned a little bit for a while. I put antiseptic on him and then he, you know, just got better just like that. But anyway, um, uh, in Pennsylvania then, we have a leash law. And dogs are supposed to be on a leash. I don't want Bullseye on a leash any more than I want to be on a leash. So the bell and the dog collar that I have from Sport Dog allows him to have a good bit of freedom most dogs never get. So you people who are complaining about the bell, my dog runs miles and miles every day. I bet you your dog don't. Anyway, on nice days, Bullseye's tethered by a 30 foot long rope so he can watch the squirrels and the birds at our bird feeder. And that's only, he's tethered only when I'm busy. If I'm talking to someone and I have a meeting of some sort that I need to go to, Bullseye will be tethered outside. But he's never tethered for more than four hours, from, from uh, usually from 11 to 2. That's when he's outside. So, because there's no shade after 2 o'clock, and in the morning he goes for his walk between, any time between 8 and 11. So... Um, but otherwise he's not tethered and he's with me. And you've seen him running around me and some of you have complained that he runs around me because of the bell. Which I really don't care whether people listen to the videos or not when the dog's out there because the dog is more important to me than anything YouTube could ever give me. But uh, the thing is, is Bullseye has heat in the winter. The stove, you see the coal stove behind him and AC in the summer. To say he's spoiled is an understatement. He's not, and uh, the thing is, is he's only spoiled, you know, in a way that humans spoil their children or better things. He's not spoiled as far as the dog he is and what he does. Fetch, fetch, fetch. Good boy, you're such a good boy, yes you are. Yes, you are. You ready to go get this? Do you want it? Do you want it? Fetch. So anyway, I thought I would do a video on Bullseye. That's the video. And I hope that uh, you understand just how good we are to this dog and what he means to us. I guess that thing went under the truck. I can't. It's having a hard time getting to it. Fetch. Fetch. Come on, fetch. That's a good boy here. Come on, here. Give, give. Oh, yeah. Hey, sit. Sit. You want this? <laughs> uh, the only uh, thing is with bullseye, sometimes, um, he knows, Bullseye knows around 20 different commands, especially whistle commands. He'll, he'll turn right for me, he'll turn left, he'll go forward, he'll stop, he'll come back. Um, he even knows how to untie himself to a degree when he gets wrapped around a tree if my wife is walking him with a cord on him. So, if, you know, if he goes in the woods and he walks around a tree or so, all you have to do is say to him, go around. 
and he can now I'm not saying he can untie knots but he can he knows to go around the tree to get untangled so he's a pretty smart dog and I, I have a lot of uh, fun with him and so does my wife and when you say things to bulls like, like nine night or time to go to bed or whatever and he's listening instead of chewing over there he's ignoring me right now because he's chewing um, he does all those little things and he's just a pleasure for us. So don't think for one minute. And also, yeah, I guess the last thing I should say is I got a comment from somebody. Uh, made me laugh. That the bell on the dog is going to make him go deaf. Well, you know what? There, are, I live out in the middle of practically nowhere. This dog does not hear anything all day long unless it's me. Okay? And some birds. Your dog, if you live in a city, is listening to traffic all day long, non-stop, 24 hours a day sound. We don't have that problem. When Bullseye's in the garage, he does not wear a collar, just like you see now. When he's uh, going for a walk with a leash or a tether, my wife takes him. He does not wear a collar. He only wears a collar when I take him out because I let him run free. What would you rather have? A little bell around your neck? and not run free or to be able to run free the dog loves the wind blowing through his hair that's all I can tell you guys have a good one hope you understand what I'm saying about the dog I mean no disrespect to nobody but he's my dog bullseye hey come here good boy good boy <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Oh, guys, one more thing. That's the door to Bullseye's kennel. It's never closed unless somebody who comes in the garage is afraid of dogs. Night-night, Bullseye.